This is WKYT News at 6.30 on the CW Lexington. Good evening on this Friday. I'm Sam Dick, and thanks for watching the WKYT 6.30 News here on the CW Lexington. What if your house was on fire and only three or four firefighters initially showed up to fight the fire? A little bit later, reporter Victor Puente will be joining me for a deeper look and effort to attract more volunteer firefighters. Now, trending right now, the Laurel County Sheriff's Office arresting three people involved in what they call a large-scale drug trafficking organization. The Sheriff's Department says a canine team found over two pounds of crystal meth. That story is the most clicked on right now on WKYT.com. That's followed by a man shot in the face in Lexington and the identity released on a body found next to railroad tracks in Berea. All right, here's what we're following right now at 630. An elderly man speaking out from jail after being indicted for a Clark County crash that killed two women. Police had said that James Pelfrey was blinded by bright lights when he crashed his car into two cars waiting at a red light. Our Caitlin Sentner has more coming up on why he is in jail now. A probation hearing today for a man charged in connection to the shooting death of 15-year-old Trinity Gay. Devonta Middlebrooks is charged with wanton endangerment. Find out why a judge revoked his probation. That's coming up. I won't, I won't start a fire in the backcountry. And warmer weather means more outdoor fun this weekend. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell has a word of warning for those hitting the trails. All right, Chris has spent the, let's see, the 4 o'clock, the 4.30, Four, the yeah, 5, the 5.30 yeah, and 6 yeah. outside. We pulled you in for the 6.30. The sun's going down, so I had to come back in. Yeah, thank I, you for joining us. Tough life. Somebody's got to lead it. Though. Seriously, it, this weekend, I keep thinking, okay, what can I do Saturday? <laughs> what can I do Sunday? Because yeah. you want to just soak up everything outside yeah. because of this weather. Whatever it is, you plan it to be outside. Yeah, definitely. Leaves, take yeah. a little bike ride. Oh, yeah, uh, there you go. run around the neighborhood. Why not? Dealing with a gorgeous sunset on a Friday. We officially say hello to the weekend with some high clouds that are out there across central and eastern Kentucky. Take you to the mountains of southeastern Kentucky. How about this shot out of Jackson? Uh, still quite a few leaves doing their thing here outside the station, though. We were showing you the weather garden a little bit ago where a lot of the leaves are beginning to come crashing down. Sun is crashing down, but what an absolutely gorgeous sunset out there. Take a look at this shot. Showing up from our WKYT live sky cam, high on top of the station here, looking toward that gorgeous sunset. Ice crystal clouds are showing up, and that's the leading edge of even warmer air that is surging in from southwest to northeast. That is a warm front that's on top of the region. So, this one little shot of some chilly air that was in and out of here in less than a day, you can't even call it one and done, is on out of town. All the warm stuff in the Plain States makes its way into your backyard for the weekend. We'll talk about that in Halloween in just a few. Police say he caused a crash that killed two people, and now four months later, an 84-year-old man is in jail charged in the deaths. Police had originally said that James Pelfrey was blinded by bright lights when he crashed into two cars waiting at a red light. But now he's facing two counts of manslaughter. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner explains why Pelfrey has just now been arrested. She has our top story at 6.30. Police say there had always been an opportunity for charges to come in this case, but for 84-year-old James Pelfrey, he says this is shocking. He says up until now, police told him it was all just an accident. Well, I know, uh, I know it was involved in a terrible accident, but I was blind to the headlights when I came out of Kroger's. And I can see what's going on. Two women in the same car died. 62-year-old Sarah Helfrick and 35-year-old Juanetta Mitchell. A grand jury returned with an indictment for Pelfrey. He faces two counts of second-degree manslaughter and one count of second-degree assault. The decision comes after police turned over vehicle data and reconstruction findings, according to the Winchester police chief. Pelfrey said he was leaving Kroger and headed down the Winchester bypass when he hit the car at the intersection of Colby Road. Originally, witnesses had told police they thought the two drivers were drag racing. However, Pelfrey says he was blinded by bright lights and didn't see cars stopped. I treasure life, and I'm sorry every night and pray every night for the people that lost their lives in the accident. I can't say any more than that. I just tell the truth. I was the best of my knowledge of what happened. Pelfrey was arrested last night, and he's behind bars here at the Clark County Detention Center in Winchester. Caitlin Sentner, WKYT. Pelfrey's arraignment has not yet been scheduled. 
A man charged in connection to the shooting death of Olympian Tyson Gay's daughter will stay in jail for now. Devonta Middlebrooks and three others are charged with wanton endangerment in Trinity Gay's death. But he faced a Fayette County judge today for a different case. The 21 year old was on probation for convictions on drug offenses. The judge revoked his probation, saying he violated his area of supervision before his recent charges. He now has an additional charge of possession of a handgun by a convicted felon. The preliminary hearing for Middlebrook's wanton endangerment case is scheduled for November 15th in Lexington. Crime is on the rise in Lexington, and today public safety leaders in the city addressed the jump in numbers. The talks come after a rash of shootings. Lexington Police Chief Mark Barnard says that crime is up 5%, and most of the increase involves property crime. And there has been at least 20 homicides in Lexington so far this year. That is more than all of last year. We certainly haven't liked that we've had recent homicides in our community, um, but we're all striving every hour of every day to make Lexington safer and safer than it was yesterday and the day before. The heroin epidemic was also a topic of discussion today. The fire chief says that there was an average of 100 Narcan doses administered each month last year. This year, that monthly average is up to 150 doses. Governor Bevan has released 13 pages of emails relating to a road project in Jessamine County. Earlier today, House Speaker Greg Stumbo filed a lawsuit asking a judge to force the governor to turn over the emails. Stumbo asked for the emails as part of his investigation into whether the governor delayed the project to punish a state lawmaker for not switching parties. Last week, Governor Bevan released some of the emails. He says he delayed the road project because the state did not own the land it needed to build the road. Governor Bevan says the project was poorly vetted and rushed by the Bashir administration. A Whitley County man is accused of trying to pass fake $100 bills. Roy Wells is charged with two counts of forgery. Deputies say he tried to pass fake bills at a bank and a gas station in Corbin. This is the second counterfeit cash case in Whitley County this month. Deputies say the fake bills Wells used have a vertical ribbon on them. In the other case, the bills did not have the ribbon. And the warmer than usual weather has people getting outside, but remember, even though it is fall, it is forest fire season here in the bluegrass. WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell has a warning for you before you hit the trails. With the extremely nice weather expected around here this weekend, places like this here at the Gorge are expected to be a little more active, and forestry officials want you to be a little more cautious. The extended summer-like temperatures are a great draw to get folks out and moving on local trails. When you take the chill out of the air, it's a little easier to enjoy the colors around you. Since it's been warmer, the leaves haven't fallen down, and um, they're still turning, and they're still beautiful out, and we, we get to, we, my wife and I get an opportunity to enjoy it. Marty Hoyer and his wife Shannon weren't the only ones on the trails. Absolutely. We'll enjoy the weather. Um, and. Uh, do a little hiking, get a little physical exercise, and um, folks are coming through. Sorry. In fact, it was getting so busy that we had to briefly stop the interview. This nice weather unfortunately comes with a price. We haven't seen substantial widespread rainfall since before Labor Day. That's why hikers like Marty have to take every precaution to protect people and the forest around them. I won't, I won't start a fire in the back country. I, I try to where there's rings and there's um, where there's rings and there's something already developed. During the fall forest fire season, it is illegal for any person to burn between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. While it's not illegal to burn after 6 p.m., forestry officials discourage it. And with no rain in the forecast this weekend, conditions are expected to stay on the dry side. At Red River Gorge, I'm WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell. Thank you, Jim. And the fire danger season ends December 15th. Staffing problems plaguing fire departments in some parts of eastern Kentucky. Our Victor Puente joins us in less than three minutes to break down the news about what state lawmakers are doing to try to solve that. And the Cats preparing to tame the Missouri Tigers on the road. Dave Buzz Baker joins me later in the Sports Buzz to talk about tomorrow's game. Welcome back to WKYT News live here at 630 on the CW Lexington. A young couple lost just about everything in a huge fire this morning in Powell County. That fire began about 5 this morning at a home on 5th Avenue in Clay City. First responders tell us the flames were nearly 30 feet high when they arrived on scene. The flames were so intense that the heat from them damaged a neighboring home. The firefighters say the homeowner was renting out the home to a man and his pregnant girlfriend who were inside the, at the time but managed to escape uninjured. 
Firefighters say they had trouble fighting the fire because so few volunteer firefighters initially were able to respond. Everybody's at their main jobs or, or didn't hear the call come out this morning. Four volunteers showed up this morning for the structure fire and uh, they didn't have enough manpower to help put it out, so we had to call the surrounding counties to come out. problem uh, with not enough people showing up. So That's is right. that right, what he, what he said? Only a few people showed up initially to fight the fire? Yeah, initially they had three different departments that responded, Clay City, Stanton, and the Middle Fork Fire Department. They're all volunteer departments, and between those three departments, they had uh, four firefighters who were able to respond. Well, I know you talked to the fire chief uh, uh, from Stanton there. Why so few people initially showing up for the fire? He said it's a problem that they've seen kind of growing over the past few years. He said it's two main things. One, the number of volunteers that they have has been going down. He said at one point they were literally having to turn people away who wanted to volunteer because wow. they had so many people who wanted to be volunteer firefighters. But he said that's just not the case anymore. He said the other issue is the economy. He said mm -hmm. that his firefighters work multiple jobs, and so sure. a lot of them work out of the county or they're just they're at work when that call goes out, so they're just unable to respond. So. The folks in Frankfurt, lawmakers, are trying to do something about this. What did you, what'd you find out about that? Well, right now there are two bills that have been pre-filed. Uh, one of them would increase funding to volunteer fire departments by about $3,000. The other one is aimed to kind of increase to, to get people to volunteer more readily. Uh, it would give volunteer firefighters a $1,000 tax credit. And the, the Stanton fire chief told me that he supports both of those bills. But he feels like the best thing that, that, that could happen is just to kind of get the word out about the need for those volunteers. You've been in the news business for quite a while and done a lot of good reporting for us and covered fires. How important are volunteer firefighters in a remote community like this? I mean, it's a question of life or death, isn't it? Oh, some it it's, it's vital. I mean, you know, you look at a place like Powell County, where I'm from, it's all volunteer fire departments. Sure. So if they're not available there, it, it could be life or death. Okay. Victor, thank you very much. And you can join the conversation by leaving your comments on WKYT.com or on our Facebook page. Let us know what you think. All right, I'm heading over here to Chris Bailey, our chief meteorologist in the First Alert Weather Center. And Chris, I shot some video. I think we're going to pull up here a couple of days ago in the Weather Garden where uh -huh. you were camped out for the last couple of hours. Oh, yeah. As you can see right there, I think this was uh, maybe it was Wednesday. We mm -hmm. had some wind going. We still had some leaves in the trees. Yeah. We still had well, some color, <laughs> but not what we're used to in Kentucky no, this not. time of year. It just really hasn't been much of a a fall foliage viewing season, has it? Been pretty dull out there, Sam. I think a lot of that uh, because we had such a wet and hot summer, not a good, uh, you know, not a pair that you often see together. Normally mm -hmm. it's hot and dry or it's wet and cool. This year it was hot and wet for the summer. And now all of a sudden we turned dry, but we kept the heat. So obviously the leaves didn't like that combination, did they? They did not. Are we going to be anywhere close to a record in the next yeah. week? Oh, yeah. We're going, to be, we're going to be right at it. Upper 70s, low 80s starting tomorrow. And that's going to carry us, Sam, right on into the first couple of days of November. And nine live sky cams on our Friday evening as we jumpstart your weekend with temperatures out there right now dropping as the sun is set now, getting low on the horizon in a few areas. Now calling it quits for the day on that Lexington sky cam. But take a look at the shot it is leaving behind. I'm telling you, this, you'll be hard pressed to find another webcam or a sky cam at a TV station that gets the sunsets that we get here from ours. Absolutely spectacular with that fiery sunset, courtesy of those ice crystal clouds that are creeping in from northwest to southeast. So that's what we're seeing coming in as that warmer air surges in from the southwest to the northeast. Let us roll through your weekend, helping you plan things out hour by hour forecast, 8 o'clock on your Saturday morning with temperatures that will be into the 50s to start out the day. Uh, 10 in the morning, already jumping it up into the mid and upper 60s, mid to upper 70s at 1 o'clock. And from there, it's game on toward thermometers that can flirt with 80 before the afternoon is through. I think we'll see an 80 or two in the southern parts of Kentucky. So a record high tomorrow, record high Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, not out of the realm of possibility. Out for a night on the town on your Saturday, those temperatures slowly dropping through the 60s. So you may not even need the jackets out there tomorrow evening. Into Sunday morning now. 50s will start the day by the time we roll toward the late morning and early afternoon, already into the 70s. But notice what happens Sunday afternoon. Notice the numbers are a little cooler than our Saturday across the north. You've got a little more cloud cover and at least the potential 
for a shower. That's a weak front that's out there. So southern Kentucky on Sunday afternoon, you're going to be a lot warmer than your neighbors to the north. Overall, though, this is just a very, very super warm pattern for not only Kentucky, most of the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, the Deep South, all the way into the Great Lakes and the Northeast. Near record highs each and every day, 75 to 81, 82 degrees, depending on exactly where you are. Records can fall, and some of the records go way, way back there. That Halloween record in Lexington, 82 degrees, set back in 1950 on a pattern that, looking back on it, was awfully similar to the one we've had so far this October. And if uh, we talked about this several days ago, Sam, that same Halloween that set a record high at 82 degrees in 1950, three and a half weeks later, hit the coldest we've ever had for the month of November in Lexington at three below zero. One to two feet of snow and winds of 50 miles an hour. But you know, when it's warm this time of, of, of the day, uh -huh. by the time we get out of here later tonight at midnight, you can feel that chill. You can. Even on a warm day like yes. this, dry air that is in place right now, Sam, it heats up quickly and it cools quickly. So we lose the sun, which, by the way, over your shoulder, heck of a sunset that is out there right now. Oh, yeah, look at yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, now that the sun is going away on us, the numbers will start to come down pretty quickly. I like that back there. Thank you. All yeah. right. Well, what happens tomorrow between the cats and those tigers from Missouri? Dave Baker's take is next on the Sports Buzz. It's time now for the Sports Buzz. Each night, we'll have talk with Dave Buzz Baker for an inside look at what's going on. And what's going on tomorrow at noon is UK versus Missouri. How do you feel about this? You've had a pretty good handle on this all year. <laughs> You have. I mean, you Missouri really have. strikes me as a dangerous team. They They're absolutely at are. home. They've right? been uh, embarrassed by Middle Tennessee last week. That's right. And really have nothing to lose. I mean, they, they can lose the game, but you know what I'm saying? Right, right, absolutely. You know, the one thing about it is they've lost nine straight in the SEC, so they need a win. You know, yeah. people talk about bowl eligibility and all this stuff. They just need to get back on track. And so for Kentucky, okay, they historically have not played really well coming off an off week, which they're coming off of now, and they've had a chance to get healed up and everything. And boy, I'll tell you something else, too, you know. We were just talking with Chris a second ago. That noon game, uh -huh. that's 11 a.m. Central in Columbia, Missouri. It worries me. But here's the deal. Missouri, we talked about the fact two games, they ran over 100 plays. They lost both of those games. They want to go like, what is it, three plays a minute or whatever we said right. yesterday. And Kentucky has got to control the ball. They've got to establish a running game. It's not only got to be Benny Snell, but Boom Williams has got to come back and make himself a presence as well. If they can do it. Kentucky gets that victory, and they have not gotten many road SEC victories in the time that I've been around over these 30 years. And then years. it sets them up for those Georgia Bulldogs at home. Yes, sir. There you go. <laughs> and, and, and what a night that would be. Remember, yeah. they tore the post down against Georgia not all that long ago. How about some basketball? All right, let's talk a little bit. It's This is the time of the year when it's huge weekend around here, right? Yep. you got football tomorrow. you have people watching the game out at Keeneland on closing day. And then you got basketball on Sweet. Sunday night. Clarion in the exhibition opener. Yeah, it's Clarion. It's John Calipari's alma mater. But when we heard him talk yesterday, he's been playing these great guards against each other. He's going to have all three of them in the backcourt together to uh, Sunday night. So you're going to see you're going to see Monk in there with the Aaron Fox and with Isaiah Briscoe, and you're going to get a real clear idea of just how difficult it's going to be for opponents to stop these guys. Cal's going to be like a mad scientist. He's going to try this lineup and then bring this guy in and switch it up and mix it up. And he, he see, is. Let's see what works. Because he's got so many pieces. I mean that in a good way. No, no, no. You're right. And remember, it, it won't be a platoon thing either. But remember what Rex said the other night. He thinks that Sasha Kalea Jones could be one of the best in the bunch. So it'll be okay. interesting to see. One final thing to tell okay. you about. Okay, game three of the World Series tonight in Chicago. Oh. Kyle Schwarber, okay, he came back from that awful knee injury on April 7th. This is his buddy Campbell Faulkner, who he met a couple of years ago. Now, Campbell is 10 years old. 4'11", 64 pounds. He's always got to have oxygen. Oh. He has a cough and suction machines. He's oh. got a team of 13 doctors trying to find a cure oh. for a rare form of mitochondrial disease. Mm. But Schwarber wears a green wristband in honor of this young man. They are really close. He was at the game when he got hurt on April 7th. Now listen to this. The kid writes to Schwarber, Kyle, I'm praying for you to get better. If you need doctors, I've got the best doctors in the oh, world no. at the Phoenix Children's oh. Hospital. I want to help. Oh. The kid has to swallow 13 pills a day oh, to survive. No. I, I can't hardly get through this darn thing without tearing up. I yeah. mean, it's an incredible That's story. Fair. It's what baseball is all about. It's what sports ought to be around. Remember, a great night of high school game time tonight at 11 from the boys. Friday night. Way to end it. Have a good one. All Thanks, right. buddy. Beautiful. Ahead tonight here on the CW Lexington, an hour of family feud is next. Then at 8, the Vampire Diaries, followed by Crazy Ex-Girlfriend at 9. 
9. Over on WKYT, MacGyver at 8. Hawaii 5 at 9. Blue Bloods at 10. Followed by WKYT News at 11. How is this for connecting with your students? He was a princess for a day, but not by choice. Students over at Crawford Middle School here in Lexington were reading the book, A Long Way to Water. That book inspired the students to raise $1,000 to buy a water well to put in the Sudan. Well, when the principal, Mike Jones, found out about it, he gave them a little extra incentive. I told the kids if they could raise the money that I would do something funny. And so I guess this is where we are. I'm dressed up as a fairy today. <laughs> That he is. You can probably guess the students made their goal. They raised about $1,300, and now they have a new goal of $2,000. What a trooper. That's awesome. Look at him down there. I know, you know, I great. know Mr. Jones, too. Do you really know He's, him? he's a good Seriously? guy. Yeah, right. yeah. He, he sends me some weather tweets sometimes, too. Oh, okay. Huh? Well. Yeah, he sometimes wants a snow day. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. So he says a break. I'm calling him out oh, right you now. are. Live right. right here on the air. Yeah. I, you know what? Hey, okay. if you're looking for a snow day right now, Sam. Keep, nope. Keep looking. Not going to happen. How about a Sunday? How about a record high day? You've got that potentially in the works over the next several days. Coming up tonight on WKYT at 11, we'll have a new hour-by-hour -hour forecast. With the numbers. Are you ready for winter? Uh, yeah, I'm getting there. I can tell. I'm getting there. I can tell. I'm getting there. All right. Enjoy your weekend. Have a great one.